to Macro Theater Builder of Worlds. This is a Burrows and Badgers build. Actually, this is a Burrows and Badgers paint. This is episode five of the construction of Red Wall Abbey. This monstrous commission build for Black Dragon Miniatures in Hinkley. Um, I'm very nearly finished, I'm pleased to say. This has been a huge build job. Um, I've really enjoyed it, actually, so far. Um, and I'm now into the final straight, the actual finishing, the painting uh, and the uh, presenting of this model. So from that point of view, uh, if you've watched the first four episodes, then you need to hang out with me and watch the rest of this. If you have not watched the first four episodes, where on earth have you been? Four episodes. Weeks and weeks of my life have been making this model and you haven't had the common decency to turn up and watch the other four. So, um, if this is the first of this series that you've watched, there are two ways to do it. You can either stop now, go back watch the other four episodes. Well, not now, because let me finish explaining and then... So, you could either go back and watch the other four episodes and then watch this one, or if you're some kind of weird, perverse kind of person and likes to work backwards, watch this one and then watch all the others. Or if you're only here for the painting, watch this one. Hey, I don't care really, just watch them all, you know. Um, if you are here for the first time, I suggest you click subscribe anyway, and that way you won't miss any other builds, although this is definitely going to be the last build video for this particular Burrows and Badgers model. There are going to be plenty more because I've got a load to make for myself. Oh, and I've got an in to make for Gary as well, but that's another story. And I've got a load of other things to be getting on with, so make sure you don't miss other Magrathea videos by clicking subscribe and, you know, do all those other things you're supposed to do with this kind of thing, you know, like and comment and ring that bell and that kind of stuff. Oh so yeah, before we have a look, I forgot to say, this is the point where I get to spout on about how what a cool game Burrows and Badgers is. Yeah, Burrows and Badgers is this game by Michael Lovejoy of Oastwall Miniatures. It's a great tabletop skirmish game, great net campaign, charming figures, my favourite game of the last three, four years or so. So uh, check it out. If you've watched other b, &B videos of mine, you'll know how much I'm into this game. Totally am into this game. I would play it more than any other game. But right now, come and have a look at the model. <sighs> right, okay, let's have a look at this model before we start the paint job to see where we're at and talk about what needs to be done in this video What's coming up on this build video from Magrathea, Builder Worlds? Come over here, come down here, come check it out. It's cool, it's cool, I agree, it's great, I like it. Okay, then this is my version of Redwall Abbey. Actually, it's been known as Mauve Wall so far during this build due to the colour of the XPS foam that has been used to build the whole set of buildings. Um, if you are completely new to this, this model is three feet by two feet on three separate one foot by two foot sections. There they are. Um, designed so the two outer ones can go together to make a different setup altogether, leave the abbey in the middle. Everything comes apart, um, play can go on inside every single one of these buildings. Well, so what's left to do? Well, to do, I have to sand uh, and texture the bases, the stuff that's still plain plywood that we can see on each one of these bases. That's the first job. Um, that will help me lay out a vegetable garden over here and a formal garden over here. Then I'm going to prime the whole model. The roofs will be primed, most of the roofs will be primed separately. Um, the model itself will be primed using a mixture of Mod Podge and black acrylic paint to seal all that XPS foam so I can get on and paint it. Then when the whole model is sealed then I'm going to paint the whole thing and I've got a couple of cool things to do to finish this project off. One of the things I haven't talked much about in the last couple of videos is what's going in this hole here at the back which is a big rose window. That would be quite good fun to do as well. So hopefully this is the last video for this build and by the end of it we should have a complete um, paint job and I will also give you my final opinion on these roof tiles from more bases because until I've painted them all I can't really decide if I really 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 love them or just really like them quite a lot. Right let's shut up get on with the sanding and uh, um, get building this here model um, and finish it off because it's been a marathon. Right, let's get these final processes underway. Let's get this model done and finished. First thing we need to do then in the finishing process is 
Mod Podge and sand all the outer areas that are not don't have flagstones they can have sand so they can have earth and other textures put on them so take Mod Podge on brush go into the corners first because we're going to have a bit of rubble or rubble larger bits of stone we're going to basically paint that in all the way around this is the stuff I'm using for the larger texture so we get stone right? and actually I think it is broken glass not broken glass but I think it's glass rather than stone that's going to go then into especially into the corners Taking off, shaking off the black gravel. Mod Podge has mostly gone dry now. So anything that hasn't stuck to the Mod Podge needs to come off. Now collect that up again. All around. Because what we want to do is now apply sand. So off this model first of all and then we need the other two Mod Podge matte PVA base glue uh, it's great for sealing um, this I'm going to use to apply the sand. The sand I'm going to be using is just coral sand, the kind of stuff that goes in the bottom of budgies cages. I don't buy sand from gaming companies or from model shops, I go and buy it from pet stores because you can buy it by the kilo and it costs a couple of quid. Um, I do like to buy quality materials and resources, uh, but sand, blimey, sand is sand. Right, okay, so paint, glue onto model. Don't worry too much about going over the corners of the flagstones because, you know, sand and earth and grass encroaches onto that kind of thing all the time. I'm not worrying about sealing the, the uh, XPS. We'll do that a bit later on in this build. So just, but I'm painting sand in between all the flagstones. Right, now I am making sure, I am going round right around the edges and inside the walls here but I'm making sure I don't get sand down the side, glue down the side of the plywood because what I don't want to do is interfere with its ability to go alongside any other boards that get made so glue on the top, cool, glue round the sides not cool Finally at the point then that I can start to get some paint on this bad boy. The base is textured. I haven't done a lot of texture where the uh, um, where the gardens are going to go, but they're all going to get painted in. I'm now going to uh, prime this model. It's huge and mostly made from XPS foam, and I want it to be red wool. So I'm going to end up using uh, Halford's red primer, but that's a, out of a spray can. And so to protect the XPS foam, first of all, I'm going to seal it. I'm going to seal all the foam with Mod Podge, uh, which is a, a, like a PVA glue, but has um, other uh, um, uh, additives in it that stop it a, shrinking quite so much, and it makes it a better seal than just regular kind of like wood glue or, or white PVA glue you might use for other crafts. I'm also going to mix into it a load of Winsor & Newton black acrylic paint, um, so not only will I seal the model, I'll prime it at the same time. Of course, the problem with a model like this, with all these interiors, is that I've got to seal inside and out, which is going to be a bit of a pain in the neck. It's going to take a little while. The roofs, uh, I don't need to worry about sealing, um, um, but they might get some primer on them anyway, but they'll end up getting sprayed. Probably end up getting painted back black again as well. I think I'll probably do slate roofs 
um, because that will contrast nicely with the red wall of red wall. So I'm going to mix up quite a large quantity of Mod Podge and black acrylic and I'm going to brush this on. This is going to take a little while. I'm not going to make you sit through all three boards of this model being painted black. But it does look pretty cool at the end, I'm sure. Well, I hope I haven't done it yet, so let's have a look. So, literally going to pour the Mod Podge in. Normally I'd kind of brush it on it. I can need a lot, so Mod Podge in that tub. And then a Windsor Newton acrylic. It's good quality acrylic, but and I always kind of balk at spending seven or eight quid on a big tub, but um, that's seven or eight quid for 250 millilitres. Whereas if you buy two pots of uh, Chaos Black from Warhammer from Games Workshop, you've pretty much spent that. So uh, here we go. Go on. Oh, it's paint in there, I promise. Here we go. Would help if I'd forgot a brush, wouldn't it, really? Okay, so... Probably going to need to find a bigger brush. Uh, mix all that Mod Podge with the acrylic. Windsor & Newton acrylics are got pretty powerful pigments in them, so... It will go black, of course, the... Mod Podge dries clear. I'm going to paint my primer over a lot of this little stonework that I did as well. So I kind of fix it in place. I do love priming a model either with a spray or with a brush purely because I've said it before. What it does is it starts to take away the, cons the various component parts of a scratch built model and makes it all look like one, which is um, a very satisfying moment. Let's take that door out, don't need that. I would probably end up having to trim down the doors a little to fit in the doorways because they're all going to get painted and these fit very snug at the moment. Um, so I'm prepared for that to happen. So. Okay, so model going black, um, you kind of get the idea, you don't really need to watch the rest of this do you? Come back and we'll see when I've got the whole thing done. Of course the other advantage I think you get when you prime this way, and you're priming XPS and you're using Mod Podge, and I'm priming all over is the fact that Mod Podge, of course, is a glue. So what I'm rather hoping it's going to do, if you have to be fairly careful with it, you don't want to clog up the detail, but what I'm hoping it's going to also achieve is going to help make the model that bit more robust because it's all going to have a, a coating, a sealant of Mod Podge to help hold the whole thing together. It's pretty tough anyway, but um, scratch-built models always are vulnerable to rough handling and rough storage and that kind of thing. So actually a, a complete coating of Mod Podge is not going to do this model any harm at all whatsoever from a longevity point of view and a robustness point of view. So, uh. Well that took a long time, blinking ages in fact, but I think this is the fiddliest of the three so should be a bit quicker from here on in. I'm going to go and put this one out in the sunshine, let it dry. They're going to need 24 hours really to dry off completely before I start putting paint on them, before I under prime them. But uh, that's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, time to crack on the next one. I think we'll do the actual Abbey itself next. The abbey itself, of course, is in several parts. This is the main abbey and the uh, uh, tower and the roof section as well. But I've forgotten, so it's not quite as fiddly as the last bit, but there's an awful lot of it. God damn. So here we go again. Black, blackity black. Blacky black, black. Slap it on. Got to make sure you cover all the XPS foam because as soon as I use an aerosol based primer, it will just eat into the foam. And then all that work I've done 
will be wasted, which is not cool. All right, just a tower to go black then, and then we're um, done with the central part. Fantastic. Getting through a lot of this stuff though, mind you. But, we'll all be good. Prime the wood as well. Spread it out. I can't wait for all this to be dry and then put it all together. Because then it would be one giant black mat. And it would look really cool. And then, we can really concentrate on painting. Prime the paint over those pillars down there as well, plastic cake pillars. Mod polish will give them a better chance of taking paint as well. All right, this is the easiest one then. Nearly there. Still quite a lot of black though, because I've got to go inside that and inside that and, uh, and the first floor. Uh, nearly there. Let's do it. Momentarily, it shall be known as Black Wall. This is the bit I love. This is the bit where it all goes together. You can no longer see the different piece of polystyrene, it all starts to fit together and look like a real proper model. All right, and then black wall became red wall. That's a Halford's red prime on there, which is gonna be fine because this whole thing is gonna be sandstone, red sandstone like Kenilworth Castle in Warwickshire. So uh, a bunch of dry brushes on top of that, gonna be pretty cool. Forgot though, I didn't really need to paint the inside because the inside is gonna be plastered, but hey ho, you know, such is life. Let's paint the rest of it. This is quite a departure for me and it's a bit nerve wracking to be honest because I've never done a red building before. I mean, I've done events in sandstone buildings so I know they're there and I know that this isn't going to be the red they end up but wow, it's quite a colour. But it's quite cool because you can really see the brickwork come out. I'm really pleased with that. So I reckon this can be pretty neat. Red wall, here we come. Then you get that sudden moment of realisation that actually you've still got quite a lot of painting to do. It looks pretty cool, I'm really pleased with it but Damn, there's still quite a lot to do. Saying that, bring on the dry brushing. Shouldn't be too bad. Well, it's too bright out here, really, to come up, really appreciate this, but I was really excited. That's red wall with red walls. They're gonna be red sandstone walls, so they're gonna get dry brushed, but actually, it's really quite cool. Um, let's go have a closer look. I really start to see the brickwork come out with the black prime on the red undercoat. It's a dry brush up really nicely, I think. Uh, so, uh, really quite pleased with this. Doors look pretty cool, they're all gonna get painted, of course. Somehow I've managed to lose the back gate over there. I don't know what I've done with that. And the back door to the Abbot's house. They must be at home somewhere, which is really annoying. But uh, yeah, very cool, I'm really pleased. I had forgotten actually though how much painting is still left to do when you look at it like this. Right, there will be a brief pause while I don't paint this model because I've left all my paints down at the mousery, the place that I'm working on, the actual kind of real actual job I've got at the moment, steampunk in a building. More of that to follow. But um yeah, sod it. I'm gonna have to stop. Right, I'm gonna stop recording now. Uh, tomorrow when I've got the paints back and I'm wearing proper clothes, I might get on with painting this bad boy. Yay! <sighs> Okay, finally got some paints at home. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna start with the roofs, and because the uh, most of the uh, building is gonna be sandstone, I'm gonna do the roofs grey. Got back to front, really. Normally I do roofs red and buildings grey, but hey ho. Uh, what do we need? Got a brush. Got some uh, Mechanica standard grey, and uh, we're gonna give it a go. See what happens. Now this is the. Uh, Proof of the pudding now for these wall bases, roof tiles, because this is where I want to see whether they're actually any cop. Cut out nice, and they went on nice. Now it's a case of, do they paint up nice? We should have to wait and see there. I'm using a big, wide brush, probably 20 minutes, millimeters to, it's gonna be an inch wide, I would've thought. Three quarters of an inch, apparently. 20 millimetres wide. I 
I'm going to paint all the roofs on the Abbey in the same manner. Uh, it really will be a case of once you've seen one roof painted. That's exactly the same technique you're using for them. Painting on tiles, I'm painting from the bottom to the top. Dragging up over the black undercoat. See how we go. Looks quite cool on camera because of the difference between the black and the grey there. It's, it's hard actually in this light. You don't really notice it quite so much. But, uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, did it there. Most of this build, most of this paint job is going to be achieved through dry brushing. So. Sure, though there's a massive amount to do, it shouldn't actually take, relatively speaking, that long. Let's uh, see, so come back to see me in a little while, see how I'm getting on because this is going to be like watching the proverbial paint dry, isn't it? They paint nicely. I'm probably going to really, 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 really hold fire on my final opinion till I've got the whole thing on the model, but that's pretty cool. I like that, I saved a lot of time and effectively I've gone from black to presentable tiles in about three colours. So from that point of view, that's pretty good. They need some moss and dirt and things on them, and a bit more weathering, but yeah. Nice one, war bases. I'll give you my final verdict at the end of the video. I'll paint all the other roofs now. God, it's going to take ages. Okay, I've got to admit the lighting in here is not great for this this evening. But we're going to make a start on the main brickwork. Now, red wall, my red wall, is going to be, or is, red sandstone. Not unlike Kenilworth Castle in Warwickshire. A castle I've spent many a night at. So all I'm doing for this considering that the model has had a black prime and then a red spray prime from Halfords. The next mission then I'm dry brushing Mournfang Brown over the entire rock face and the stonework, which I think is going to work quite nicely. Um, and then I'll lighten it on top of that. But I want to keep a lot of the red so, uh, yeah, it's a kind of like back to front. Normally, as I was saying, I normally do stones grey and roofs red, and now I'm doing stones red and roofs grey. It's really hard to get your head around because, in my mind, when I paint models, stone is grey. That's the way it works. So, and I know, though I know there are lots of different kinds of rock that we make buildings out of, and like I said, places like Kenilworth Castle, where I've done loads of events at in the past perfect example of a really nice red sandstone castle really hard for me to get my head around painting all this brickwork red um, but this is where all that time spent scribing all the, the stone really pays off now and all that time texturing the stonework with my tinfoil back in previous episodes really pays off dry brushing this dead easy it's a lot to paint but it's going to look pretty good I think so Gosh. stones out in the uh, on the floor outside they're red sandstone and the stairs are red sandstone and so everything is going to get this more frank brown dry brush to start off with. The floor, the flagstones inside the, the abbey are also red sandstone. Of course, the walls are going to be plastered, so they don't need this. But, um, yeah, quite a subtle colour, more frank brown on this red primer, but that's going to work pretty well. Right, I'll film a 
a lighter colour going on this and then you'll be able to see the difference. It's such a damn big model. I mean, it's going to come out really nice and I'm really kind of pleased with it and etc etc. But in the meantime, it's just bloody huge. Gonna look cool though. Thank heavens for big brushes, don't you know? Yes, yeah, that's nice. Look around there. You have to dry brush the rose window in the same style, of course. So here's the rose window. Gonna get exactly the same treatment as the rest. It's gonna sit in there. It's gonna be really nice. It's gonna be a nice feature that. One of those difficult colours to dry brush on actually and dry brush with because it's kind of hard to know whether you're actually doing much. You won't really know till I do another the next layer, something lighter. Um, I'm probably going to do more fang brown with some, probably some orange mixed in it actually, uh, before I go for a bleach bone, you shabdy bone kind of real fine. Highlight. We shall see. It's a bit of an experiment. This bit of a bloody big model to be doing an experiment on, mind you. But... Okay, ho. Talk quietly amongst yourselves. This is going to take a little while. So this layer now is one fan brown with um, troll slayer orange. Uh, that's coming up quite nicely. Uh, I'm probably only going to manage another dry brush on top of this with a bone colour. Unfortunately, I'm running out of the orange. Which means I'm going to have to delay the rest of this until tomorrow when I can get to my uh, nearest FLGS friendly local gaming store and pick up. Some more orange paint. Well, probably quite good because it's kind of like late at night now. So I could probably do it going to bed. But, um, yeah. Getting there. I hope I might be able to get all the way down this side. I'm not going to be able to get the flagstones down inside. No. Never mind. Here we go. Okay, so now the whole model has had the roofs painted and the whole thing's been dry brushed Mornfang brown and the Abbey in the middle has had some orange applied to it as well. As you can see, the problem with this model is it's bloody enormous, so fitting on my workbench is difficult, I'm having to paint it a bit at a time. Um, so now the next layer of paint I'm going to go all over it will be Mornfang brown mixed with a... whatever that is, Troll Slayer orange and then a uh, truss layer orange highlight on top of that and then probably uh, more fang, no no, a more gas bone probably on top of that. The inside of the abbey and the inside has been painted has a first coat of your shabty bone on it, that will end up being a whitewash and all the insides of all the rooms are going to be like that. So I've still got a little way to go but we're cracking on. Well, when I designed this model I didn't exactly take <coughs> easy painting into account really. I probably should have made this roof detachable on the cloister but it totally isn't so this bit of paint job is going to be fairly random I think as actually it's his camera work still it's really dark in there you can hardly see it I can't see anyway lighter highlights I think 
are required. Now then, all three boards have now had two or three amounts of dry brushing. Uh, we dry brushed Mornfang Brown and then Mornfang Brown with uh, Charles Slayer Orange and then uh, another layer of that which is lighter. I'm now going to wash the whole thing with Agrax Earth Shade to get into all the uh, um, recesses of all the stonework. I'm going to let all that dry and then I'm going to give that a final dry brush um, or probably two layers of dry brush uh, to pick out all the, the stone details. Then I'm going to get on with the floors. I have debated about having initially red sandstone pavings just like all the rest of the stones but bricks but I think I'm probably not going to do that. I'm thinking I'm going to have I'm going to go back and paint the, the stonework in a grey colour of some description otherwise it's just going to be way too much red on this model um, so uh, but yeah, first of all Agrax Earthshade all over the whole thing just to give it that extra definition um, in all those crevices I've gone all that effort to do all that scribing I might as well pick them out with a nice dark wash all over and then I can really go to town with a dry brush to pick out the top texture. Um, and yep, I like other bits of the paint job. This is going to be like watching paint dry, so come back when I've done a bit more of this, will you? So now I'm going for, now I've done the Agrax Earth Shade, that's dried, and I've done two dry brushes over the top of that with Mournfang Brown with. Uh, Trolls layer orange and then just Trolls layer orange on top of it. I'm now going for the internal walls which are just going to be whitewashed plaster. So they've had your shabty brown, your shabty bone and now they're just getting a white scar layer over the top of it. It's going to be fairly rough but it'll be pretty effective I think. It'll be quite nice. Going for a fairly plain look on the inside of the abbey. Um, it would be cool if it ended up with things hanging on it but that's not part of the plan at the minute. So I'm just going to go for white Nice contrast with the uh, sandstone. It's going to look pretty neat. Tower roof first of all. Then I've got to do the browns on the woodwork. And then I'm going to start on the main abbey building itself. Got to be careful though because these cake pillars keep losing the paint. Which is really, really annoying. So um, I'm going to need to mod podge over the top of them to protect the paint I think. It's sandstone, it's red, it's dry rust, it's taking clean ages. <sighs> right, that's pretty much all the stonework done on this bit of this model. I'm now going to do the whitewashing inside and then some wood details and then the stuff outside. Making progress, but my word, it's taking a long time. <sighs> Back to it. Huzzah! Right, well, okay, so this is a painting update on the Abbey. Um, making progress. <sighs> I can't decide whether I should paint just one thing and get it all completely finished or try to kind of paint all the same colour to try and keep um, continuity in colour. Everything now is done stonework-wise, apart from this lower section on this end bit here. Timber is now painted over here, but he's not painted over here. Obviously, I've still got red floor there, although the fountain is now taking shape. And every building on the inside is now whitewashed, I think. Pretty much. Possibly, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Hang on. Oh, yeah, white in there, too. Definitely. White inside there. You can't see white inside there. Just take my word for it. Um, so I'm going to carry on. I uh, think I'm probably going to get everything to this state. So I need to dry brush. I've been using foam brushes, foam dudes like this to do uh, larger areas, dry brushing and walls and things, which worked out really fast. It's helping me out no end. Um, so yeah, I need to kind of carry on, I suppose, and um, I'll do the next bit. I do genuinely feel that we're on the uh, uh, the way to the end, but uh, it's taking a while. This 
chimney is wobbly. It's not going to sit properly on this bit of chimney. Because for some reason I wasn't concentrating when it got stuck and it was stuck wobbly and now it's going to annoy the hell out of me. So it's coming off and it's going to get stuck back on. Not wobbly. Because although it's not even going to be in my collection it will annoy the hell out of me knowing that it's wobbly. So I'm going to sort it out. The model this big is, is spreading out around the workshop. There's the uh, chimney drying. That's the uh, main navy building. Well, this then is um, the, the Abbott's house board section. Over here we have the refectory section and then here's the abbey roof and tower. Now I'm actually, I've made quite a lot of progress now. Um, and what I'm really left to do on all the board sections is earth kind of textures and painting all the woodwork. The woodwork's all got a base coat on it and now it needs dry brushing up and making it look right. This is the garden section outside the refectory, which I need to, uh, when I've painted it all, I'm going to plant up with, with various vegetables and things in here to be landscaping. Um, and then over here, yeah, the formal garden needs light work, some treatment, some lawn. It's a bit. The formal garden needs some uh, needs dry brushing and some plants added and, and the fountain finishing off. So, I really am on the run in now. <laughs> it's taking pig and ages. But it is looking pretty cool. And this now is at the point where we're at. Most of the stonework is done, most of the roofs are done, most of the paving is done. The things I need to do more than anything else now is all the woodwork and then these earth areas. When I've done that, I can then work, start on the detailing. Garden here, garden here, garden over here. So, this job this evening then, woodwork, dry brushing from Rhinox Brown, Rhinox Hide, up to whatever. Huh. On your marks, good set. Go! Well, I'm painting wood. I am painting wood. Here we go. This is the wood. Um, it's coming out quite nicely, actually. I'm basically using um, what we've got Rhinox hide. Yep, Rhinox hide. And we are using Citadel XV88. And we are using Morgas bone. And um, so, the, everything, the wood is. Uh, base coated in Rhinox hide and that's been left to dry for ages so here we are wood on the tower and that's now going to have uh, a Rhinox hide and XV88 mix and then another one dry brush on top of that and then an XV88 dry brush and then a Morgoth bone so there's about five layers of dry brushing going onto every wooden item the gates here need metal bands put on them so I have to go over that with a bunch of kind of bolt gun metal iron iron kind of metal and stuff but there's a lot of wood I've done uh, you can't see it really in this light because the light in here is shot uh, the wood on this board section is done so that's the outside the cloisters and the walkway through to the uh, abbey itself and under here on, let's go around this way with the camera Zip. under here we've got the uh, ablution tap also can't see because it's too damn dark, but never mind. Um, the abbey itself, roof of the tower, walkway of the tower, doors and walkway back there. Hey, look at the pretty rose window. Isn't that lovely? Look at that, the light on that. Hey, yeah, that's cool. We like this a lot. Yeah, look at the rose window, kids. Don't get distracted by the rose window. We're doing woodwork. And then over here on this side of the model, most of the wood actually is there's a couple of wooden floors and the cloister there. Nearly done all the wood. Well, nearly done the wood. Done half the wood. I've got wood. Well, I haven't really because it's just guys <laughs> dull. Uh, dry brush, dry brush, dry brush, dry brush, dry brush, dry brush, five layers, dry brush, dry brush, dry brush. Here we go. Magathea gets wood. Let's do it. <sighs>
Okay. We're going to stop. Um, you know, I said at the beginning of this video that this was the last video in the series. Do you remember that? 40 odd minutes ago. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'm thinking actually that this isn't going to be the last video in this series because although the model is done and I've done all the shooting to make the final video, the painting of this has taken up over 40 minutes of this video, right? And um, I think it'll be a lot easier to watch if there's actually a part six. So I'm stopping here. Now, this video is going to finish. Well, in a moment when I've finished talking to myself, um, we're going to stop at the end of the video with the model painted but needing all the detail. There will be an episode six, which is going to be the detailing, the rose window, the uh, vegetable gardens, the formal gardens, and finishing off the model. Um, I'm not going to make you wait a week for that though, I'll get that done in the next day or so, but this will be such a mammoth paint job, a mammoth video shoot, a mammoth edit um, that I really wanted to get one video out this weekend because it's been a couple of weekends since I've produced anything um, and sometimes since I had part four out and I've been teasing this on Facebook on the Bows and Badgers group and on my own page and on my Magathea page and that kind of thing so this is the end of episode five tune in next time on Magathea Builder Worlds to watch Redwall Abbey the build part six the final one i promise i think so don't forget if you've enjoyed this subscribe if you think my videos are too long tell me in the comments down below if you happily watch a two hour video tell me in the comments down below if you uh, have enjoyed watching this series so far tell me in the comments down below remember subscribe to the channel press the little bell to get notifications and that way there you won't miss part six the final part of this year build and uh, i'm looking forward to getting it all done i love reading your comments i love uh, looking at your contributions to everything that i do I'm sorry I've kept you waiting so long, but frankly, life, proper work, and all sorts of other things have got in the way of getting this done. I, that and the fact I seriously underestimated how long it was going to take me to produce a model of this size. So, I'll see you next time on Magrathea Builder Worlds. Thanks for watching. <laughs>